most crucial player in this series moving forward, especially considering you think the Suns still have a shot? The answer is Chris Paul. The answer is Chris Paul. Let's not overthink this one. Look, the issue with the Suns right now, why did they lose the last two games, really? You cut off the head of the snake, what happens? Chris Paul is the head of the snake. And Stephen A., you've pointed it out, whether it's lingering effects of COVID or ligament in his hands, whatever it is, Chris Paul is not right. Right now, he's not right. With Isaiah Thomas talking about he needs to stop playing it safe and, and not play not to lose but play to win. I don't. If, if Zeke sees that, I'm willing to say it's there. I don't see that. I see Chris Paul not himself. And this is a, such a legacy game for him. You know, he's so snake bit. If you look, I thought they would have won. They would have beaten Golden State, in my opinion, if he plays game seven in Houston. But he hasn't been healthy this time of year. When his team's needed him most, when he has, he hasn't played great all the time. If Chris Paul plays the way he did in game six, here we are in another game six in the previous round. He was not playing very well, and his team wasn't functioning very well heading into that game six. Chris Paul played as good a game as can be played, and they won. That's why they're in the finals. He needs to do that again. He is writing his script. Stephen A., this is the thrill of victory, the agony of defeat. They're all, what are you going to say, his whole legacy swing hangs in the bounce? Yes. Yes, I am. Extremely high leverage games make you either greater in everyone's estimation as time goes on or not as great. Chris Paul's legacy, he'll be a great player anyway, but his legacy truly hangs in the balance here. Will he be a champion? Because he has a chance to be, but he has to have a monster game. He has to play great Chris Paul basketball in order to do it. He's the most important player. Well, listen, I, I, I get where you're coming from. What I would, my, my retort to that would be this, Max. At some point in time, we have to just absorb and embrace the realization of a person being who they are, um, along with their limitations. Chris Paul is a six-foot guard. Now, he should not have pushed Giannis on the alley-oop, but you know what? Instinct, his instincts were wrong in this particular, in this particular regard. And as a, result, as a result, he was just hoping that Giannis misses. But we call Giannis the Greek freak for a reason, because he does what he does in terms of his athleticism, his tenacity, uh, you know, the, the, just the, the unstoppable uh, tendencies that he has. And he's 6'11", who's gained 60 pounds of muscle since he entered the NBA. Chris Paul, he's a six-foot guard. OK, um, and thinking about him dunking is an aberration for crying out loud. You count on one hand how many, he's done, how many times he's done it in his career. That's not who he is. He's incredibly limited in terms of his size and his athleticism. And so when we look at it from that perspective and you think about the fact that he's going up against this team, the name that comes to my mind is Chris Middleton because I'm looking at the Greek freak. I'm looking at CP3 and booking those guys being who they are. Middleton is the person that we lamented was just inconsistent. But he had 40 in, like, game three, I think. Uh, he had 29 Saturday night in game five. Uh, Middleton has been absolutely spectacular. He's averaging 25 and six in this series on 44% shooting and 36% from three-point range. His mid-range game is as pure as it comes. He's looked absolutely spectacular for the most part during these NBA final series. And even though the numbers would speak to Giannis, who's averaging, what is it, 32 and 13 uh, for this series on 61% shooting, although 16% from three-point range. That's not his game. Thank goodness he's recognized that. Middleton could be in the argument for NBA Finals MVP based on how he's performed and when he has performed, meaning the ability to close and seal the deal. That's how special he has been. And so when I look at CP3 against these guys, you're going up against these trees in Milwaukee. Drew Holiday, 6'6". Uh, Middleton, 6'8". Giannis is 6'11". Lopez is 7 feet. Uh, uh, P.J. Tucker's about 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, and is a, is a defensive stalwart. You know, you got Connaughton coming off the bench. That's the closest thing to CP3 size. Even Portis is a bit is a 6'9". And you just get to a point where you got to embrace some of the limitations that a guy has. Certainly, I look at CP3 and what he's lacking or what he hasn't been able to get done over these last three games. But I can't deny the fact that there comes a point in time where there's but so much you can expect when you see well, the other team do 
what they've been doing. Well, uh, okay. I, I hear you. I agree with that, actually. There's a reason that it almost never happens that a guy under 6'4 is the best player on a championship team. And when it does happen, there's usually a pretty good excuse, right? Kevin Love and Kyrie get hurt. Okay, Steph Curry's mm -hmm. the best player on a championship team. But I will point out, Stephen A., that it has been done before. Was Isaiah and his Pistons going up, a pro going up against a Kareem who was still an MVP? No, right? There's no there's, – that Kareem's not there. Um, was Jordan too <clears throat> deep yet? No. So there was some daylight there. Much like this year, everyone got hurt, and there was some daylight, and these are the teams that made the finals as a result. But yeah. now, what, as you would say, what you going to do? Isaiah, no, I agree. small point guard, what you going to do? So if we're talking about Chris Paul in the, among the all-time greats, mm -hmm. while he's still great, right. he's got to do this well, right now. Well, we said, remember, we conceded he'd be top five if he won the championship. If he didn't, he wouldn't. So in other words, what we're saying is we're not going to elevate you. But it's not like we're going to subtract from the greatness that you've put on display. That's the difference here. And some guys will look at them and will say, oh, hell no. You really, really fall. You really, really fall off that pedestal. You really hurt yourself. I don't think when you look at CP3 going up against this team and going up against some of the challenges that he had, particularly devoid of some of the weapons, with Sarek going down and you guys not having the weapons necessary and not having the depth, the size, the athleticism, et cetera, I think those things will be realized, which is why I don't think it'll count as much against him it's as you're blunder, proclaiming though. it will. But in the end, what I will say to you is this. You bring up the Pistons. We have to stop that. Let's, re let's remember, these are the bad boys we're talking about here with Isaiah. Yes, Isaiah was the leader. He was the floor general. He was your point guard. He was absolutely spectacular. He could put up buckets anytime. Remember the 25 points in one quarter against the A Lakers in an NBA Finals game on one leg, by the way. Right, on he one was leg. hurt. Okay. He, that's my point, Stephen A. He was also hurt said, and did it. Wait, wait a minute, but, but I'm, I'm saying CP3. No one's ever confused CP3 for being Isaiah. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.